Okay, we're back. Game number one in the semifinals currently underway. If you showed me this bracket, I think I would have predicted Neeb. I don't know that I would have predicted uh, Pili Pili, though. So really impressive. Just before we even do intros to see him land his way here to the semifinals. But Spawny here in the bottom right side. It's going to be On Fire's Blue Protoss Neeb. And in the top, light, top left, we have the Cyceroom gaming player in red, Peely Peely. Now I gotta Ooh, say, I like, know. oh, you he, go first. He actually, um, yeah, he made it over Bales 3-2. And I want to say that's actually impressive, not just because Bales, I think, is a, a relatively strong PvP player, but also just because Peely Peely has traditionally struggled a lot versus Bales. He's consistently been one of the players that Peely Peely, no matter how well Peely Peely tends to be doing, like, Bales tends to just have this weird edge over him and always seems to win but uh being able to beat bales is actually i think a really good sign that peely peely is feeling good today well okay as good as peely peely might be feeling and as good as he might be doing i gotta tell you watching me beat hawk the way he did it wasn't mm -hmm. like these were very very one-sided games but he always came ahead very clearly when it came to those victories so as much as i i actually do respect peely peely he's a good player there's no doubt in my mind he can beat most players in north america I don't know that he's going to have what it takes to beat Neeb. Because one thing oh, I've noticed out of Peely yeah. Peely as well is he doesn't have, a, how to say this, like a variety of builds. Like we saw Neeb do something weird on Coral Carnage Knockout with the Sentry and the Stalker opener, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we, like we could cast 100 games of Peely Peely. I don't know that we see him ever do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think nobody would argue with you if you said Peely Peely is the underdog. He is the one that has to upset. Yeah. And I also will say like, he is very well known for doing very particular things a lot in his series. Like, he is a player that loves going for his Dark Templars. Like, an absurd amount of Dark Templars come out in Peely Peely games, especially if it ever makes a past two base play. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that Neeb may, like, definitely knows about Peely Peely and will probably look to exploit. But look at this, we already have a Twilight Council coming out from Peely Peely. <laughs> we, we might be seeing those uh, Dark Templars coming out sooner than I thought. Yeah, maybe. maybe, but Neeb's doing what he did last time. We talked about this before. Like, until he needed to change his build versus Huck, it was like three of those four games were all Stargate openers. And mm -hmm. this is something I think is probably common enough knowledge that Peely Peely, I would really hope that this is for something more along the lines of Blank than DTs. Because if you're going to build into somebody who always goes with, with detection pathing, I guess you could say with tech paths, it seems like a bad idea to me. But yeah, uh, regardless, regardless of what Peely Peely actually makes with this, there we go, Blink. I was going to say, I'm much happier mm -hmm. to see Blink because I know for a fact, I've seen Peely's streams, like he's a smarter guy than mm -hmm. to build blindly into Neeb like this. But uh, the Adepts are going to get over here and be a little bit annoying. You know, this was something we saw with Huck as well. Every time Huck would get the Adepts over and kill some of Neeb's probes, but then Neeb would come back and kill Huck. So <laughs> we'll see if that trend mm. continues here with Peely Peely as uh, Neeb will actually defend against these adepts pretty easily, losing a wow. small amount of probes. Five, but and still not that bad. I'm actually really impressed that Peely Peely didn't end up losing any probes because there were two adepts in his mineral line as well. But uh, And even though those adepts do manage to get a scout out on the Twilight Council, they see that Blink or, you know, adept resonating glaze. One of the two is researching. Uh, not losing any probes over there is actually a really, really nice win. Although it is pretty still close in the worker supply. Yeah, the blink's going to be really nice, though, because it will help chase down this Oracle, for example. I mean, there's going to be four pylons and a really nice formation, actually, that I don't think Neve actually gets many, if any, probe kills. So that's a good thing. Uh, he's also mm -hmm. doing what he did last time, too, against Huck, where we saw that Void Ray come out. It's going to be doing it once again. But there are going to be blink stalkers, and fairly early this time, so I'm not sure how just how effective that Void Ray will or won't be. Uh, the Oracle ends up just casting Revelation as a Constellation Prize and decides to walk away, but it does tag everything here in the base, so he does have full vision on what Peely Peely is currently doing. Yeah, and that's actually going to be really important, and knowing that your opponent has those two Stalkers at home is going to mean that you can actually move or like uh, play a little bit more aggressively, uh, maybe taking your expansion a little bit earlier or something, but he also sees those Stalkers moving across the map, so this is maybe going to open up an opportunity for these uh, the Oracle to move back in, at least for us to add some Fortune Overcharges. Well, that overcharge is actually great at keeping the stalkers at bay for the time being. Not getting pushed up to the top of the ramp. Um, 
Of course, if there's a if the sentry's in position, could have locked a lot of these in. But Peely Peely once again does have blinks, so there's really no threat to him getting caught. Oh, decides to blink in aggressively and go for that void ray. It doesn't even get a chance to prismatically align. No energy for another photon overcharge. The immortal gets targeted immediately oh. and goes down as well. This gets a little bit scary for Neeb, but he does have another immortal on the way. The mothership core was never touched through this, so she's gonna have an overcharge eventually. And Peely Peely's attack has been for the for the time stalled out. Yeah, but picking off not only the Voidery, but also the Immortal, that's actually going to be a huge, huge win, I think, for Peely Peely. He's going to have to be a bit careful. He's losing a lot more Stalkers, I think, than he needed yeah. to as that uh, and, next Immortal pops out. But I mean, I, he doesn't have to worry about a Voidery anytime soon now. The biggest advantage the Immortals provide over Stalkers in this instance are going to be the fact that they don't have projectile damage. They will guarantee get damage on these Blink Stalkers. An Overcharge can actually be juked and jive, but not the Immortal. Photon Overcharge is going to go down on these Stalkers. They just blinked in. That's going to cost them a couple. Uh, Neem not focus firing, actually. Uh, it's a little bit awkward. Does get three more Stalkers, though, for that Immortal. Hard to say whether it was cost-savvy or not, but, you know, he's sitting on 25 probes. Neeb's sitting on 22, but they're both going to be stuck on one base. So this is not... The question is, like, how long can Neeb hold on with this? How long until eventually he starves out or Peely Peely starves out and can't make more Blink Stalkers? High Ground Vision's helping a little bit here, but not a whole lot. The Immortal's getting really good trades mm. now. And the Zealots are actually... The one Zealot is a great warp in choice. Yeah, the Zelts are going to make it much more difficult for these Stalkers to actually blink on top of the Immortal. And we're starting to see that Peely Peely is not making as much progress as he was before. He snipes off this Immortal, but guess what? Another Immortal is about to pop out. So even though Peely Peely is doing I a good like... job over here, there's going to be another Fortune Overcharge soon, too. I like that he actually saved the Overcharge. He knew Blink was off of cooldown. He, if he had popped it right away, that would have been great. But he holds it knowing that it was too late when it was ready and able. Uh, the Immortal, unfortunately, did pop its barrier, however. So it's a little bit weak mm -hmm. now to the Stalkers coming at the ramp. But again, there's going to be that Overcharge pop. Possibly available uses it before he loses it stalkers do blink away Ooh. and peely peely little bit by little bit is still chipping away at neeb like i'm actually not feeling <laughs> too bad for peely peely but if neeb finally at any point has two stalkers or sorry two immortals in play this heavily shifts in his favor because i mean and up to this point it's been one and then one and then one and then one he blinks in but that's a lot of damage that's going to go down before that stalker falls the barrier gets popped more stalkers going to get picked off and now there's more retaining units at the top of the ramp. More zealots were made. Those can soak hits. They deal a lot of damage. Another immortal's on the way. The mothership core's coming back. I mean, Neeb's actually going to have to expand, and I think that's what he's looking towards doing. And I think Peely Peely, knowing that this is the case because of what he's feeling, that burn of <laughs> back at home, warps in sentries to lock Neeb into his main. That is a really clever move. Because if he can buy himself any amount of time getting that Nexus down, oh. he's good to go. But he doesn't. He misses it. The Force Hill comes down a little bit late. The Stalker still gets in range of the st oh, the Immortal still in range of the Stalkers. It's kiting away because those barriers almost off of cooldown, but not quite. Ooh, but that's both nice the Force Fields. Over there from Peely Peely. Yeah, and actually it's really important to know that Peely Peely kept those sentries far enough back that Need didn't really see the Force Fields over there. Now Adepts can still make their way down, and this is going to oh, be he's a really important thing. Of our sentry. No, okay. No, I th no, I think he's he just wants to be able to keep an eye and make sure he knows when Peely Peely is no longer at the bottom of his ramp because there is a point where you don't really want to stick around for too long. That's true. That's very true. Uh, now the war prism is actually gonna help get all these down to the low ground as well, which is kind of another important aspect we haven't really covered too much of here. But again, mm -hmm. Peely Peely. He doesn't take an expansion behind this. He doesn't gain a lead yet. He's soft containing, but he's long distance mining. You know, there's no actual nexus coming down for him. Mm. Neeb has definitely been showing intention to do this. And I think in this position, he's looking a lot better. He's got a lot of stalkers to work with. He's got a guardian shield that gets picked <laughs> up and saved in the backside. He's using the warp prism like blink. So he might not have blink research, but he essentially has blink in this fight. Keeps these stalkers alive. Gets some huge gains so that immortal stays alive a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And again, that barrier keeps it uh, oh. keeps it alive. Shot getting fired left and right but the stalkers can't quite touch what this immortal brings gg neeb i want to point out by the way that looked a little bit crazy for him but i don't feel like at any point he was sweating or panicking like that was pretty calm and collected out of him the entire way through yeah, Neeb is just a very calm player. I think it's actually uh, best said in like Scarlet's words, you can't actually shake him. You can't actually throw him off his game. It's so unbelievably difficult to actually do. Um, 
But yeah, I, I will say, like, Peely Peely, definitely, I think you were saying it earlier in the game also, like, Peely Peely still looked like he had the potential. Like, if things had just gone a little bit better, he may have been able to start to uh, snowball over there. But it is about the fact that, like, he wasn't able to snowball. That's what you have to do against Immortals. You have to start picking them off and making sure that they don't get into big enough numbers that uh, you just can't deal with it anymore. Um, I don't know. It was It was a really interesting and weird game. But I don't actually know if it's super telling of, like, Neve is just showing dominance over Peely Peely. I feel like that I was actually... I disagree. I think... Really? I, I think in that one game, I'm not going to say for the whole series, but, hmm. like, that was handled so perfectly. And for me, a lot of that was the way the overcharge was being used. He never freaked out. I mean, a lot of that Blink Stalker build is supposed to really scare Neve as well, but he never got scared into his main. I mean, he was pushing down that ramp with that first Immortal, man. Like, no fear. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it could also be that case where, you know, <laughs> bravery is another word for stupid, but, like, that was that was Neve, I think, just not, like you said, he can't be rattled. He played that calmly, and for Peely Peely, I know he's got more than a Blink Stalker all in up his sleeve, but, you know, that's a powerful build. That's meant to beat a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, that is true, but at the same time, like, I, I really do feel like it actually could, like, one extra little micro mistake or something out of Neve, one extra little uh, bit from Peely Peely, and that actually could have really gone his way. Um, I am, uh, I am interested, sure? though, like, as you were saying, oh, uh... No, we got to okay. Okay. <laughs> Peely Peely saying... Oh, I know this feeling. You all get that one little smudge, you keep wiping at it, it just makes it smudgier and doesn't help. Ugh the worst i've never had that problem like whenever i wear my glasses i can't tell whether there's a smudge or not can you actually see the difference i think it, it depends on what type of smudge it is like when you like if i actually grab my glasses by the corner yes i can see that smudge it's so annoying like at all times <laughs> but okay they're ready we're gonna hop to runes of endion for game number two remember it's the semifinals. it's a best of five and it is one zero in the favor of neeb so we'll see you guys here in just a moment all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Game number two currently underway here for the GMAC Tours. We'll call it qualifier, but it's the WCS Spring Circuit Championship Challenger for North America as well. Kind of dual-purpose tournament if you uh, if you want to consider it that way. But spawning here on the bottom left side of Ruins of Endion, we have the Red Protoss from Psystorm Gaming, the underdog, and give it up for Peely Peely. And in the bottom right, we have the blue Protoss player leading up to Series 1 and 0. It's on fire's need. Thank you, by the way, to Aquarius XXX for the three month resub as well. Greatly appreciated. But Runes of Endion is a very funky map. And I feel like this is a map where you've got close enough by air spawns, a Stargate's preferable. Somebody like Neeb, who tends to open Stargate anyways, I would imagine further encouraged to do it on this map. I'm curious whether Peely Peely's going to do it or not, though. We did see the uh, the Phoenix count for Huck win it out for him here last time, and uh, might have been a, a telling weakness of Neeb, perhaps, or just a bad game. Well, only time will tell. This is definitely a map that uh, Neeb has shown, at least in that last game, just because of the close air distances. He likes to go for that quick Mothership Core push across the map, gets a little bit of scouting information, maybe forces a bunch of overcharge, and punishes a player that doesn't go for that early Stalker. Uh, I'm so actually, Peely Peely. That was uh, I think Savage. This was, he was, this, it was actually on the same map that Huck did the exact same thing, but Neeb's probe got away, and it was just like, oh, I guess Huck actually lost a bunch of mining, but Peely Peely well, managed to get it. The point I want to I hand with that, actually, it's actually really hard to catch that probe early on, and the worst part about playing mm -hmm. PvP that we see consistently is you can't really hide much. It's very difficult to hide a building and hide a build outside of a proxy, because that probe's going to be just running circles and circles and circles until the adepts are out, until the mothership core's out. Like, it's just going to know exactly what your gas timing is. And having that shut mm -hmm. down so early, you know, Neeb didn't actually get to see that Peely Peely's going for two stalkers instead of two adepts, for example. Yeah, uh, this game, Neeb, oh, he's he's sending that mothership core around. He might just be checking his main base uh, for that probe. It's, yeah, it looks like that's all he's really going to be doing with it for now. But you kind of saw, like, what he did versus Huck. He sent that much core straight across the map. And the fact that he lost that probe, as you were saying, and didn't see whether it was a stalker or an adept, that could be the reason why he doesn't send that much core across the map. Well, I know we're all cheering for Peely Peely. I'm on one for a good underdog, and I really like the two-stalker aggression, but uh, the dedication to this might be a bad thing. 
I thought for a moment he was going to go for an expand, but it's just two probes that are too much for the main. So it's actually very on a very mm -hmm. small technical level more effective to mine like this long distance than to actually have them oversaturate the main. But uh, no expansion. Oh, there we go. Expansion does get plopped down. Excuse me. Uh, mm -hmm. does match up with Neebs. Not too badly, but a little bit behind. Yeah, Peely Peely just opting to go for two extra stalkers a little bit earlier on, which actually would have worked out maybe uh, pretty well if he was up against, say, a Stargate play or something, but he is not going to be up against that. He's just going to move across the map with these four stalkers. Uh, Neeb not doing anything super cheeky or anything, knocking down, like, the, the rock towers or anything, you know, so really just going to be relying on what he has. Peely can actually get some, some advantage coming here if uh, Neeb has to come down that ramp without the Mothership Core. Yeah, one sentry guarding shield is nice, but it's not going to make up for the damage of a fourth stalker. So, uh, going to disengage mm. for the moment, but realizing that stalker is getting a little bit low. High ground vision Ooh. being really good here for Neeb. But uh, still, both players do bleed out one stalker apiece. Yeah, uh, Neeb just having a slight advantage at the end of it as the stalker's uh, shields for Peely Peely again taken out also. But now with the pylons there, the Mudge Core is set up nicely to foot an overcharge if it needs to. Um, Peely Peely not going to really be able to make a whole lot more progress over here. He's really just going to be looking to get up that Twilight Council as he throws down, get up his Robo, and uh, look to transition out. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting for me because I had mentioned the Stargate play early on and neither player heading that direction. We actually have the Robo for Neeb, obviously, but Peely still hasn't really dedicated to a direction. I mean, um, the Robo's coming down now, but this could mm. be for just an Observer. We might see him go full left field and throw down a Dark Shrine or something wonky. <laughs> the nice thing is you have these rocks. They buy you time. You know for a fact, like for both players, they know there's not going to be a Depths transferring in without a Warp Prism or anything anytime soon. So if there's a time to play Greedy, it's within the next minute and a half of gameplay. And that's the only time you're going to safely get away with it. Yeah, Blink is going to come out from both of these players. And with the Robos coming out for both of the players as well, I oh. could very well see our first like big late game PvP ga uh, series where we end up seeing like the Disruptor Blink Soccer play coming out from both players. So, by the way, a score to report on the bracket. Uh, Puck upsetting with a 3-2 over Hydra, apparently. Oh, that makes me so happy. Puck has been playing really, really well the past couple of weeks, I would say. Like, he's actually just been so much fun to watch. Well, that's going to be Pult versus Puck in the semifinals. But I'm, I'm as much as I am happy for Puck, I mean, God knows he's been like the North American hope for God knows how long, right? But... I'm just shocked to see Hydra lose something. I mean, <laughs> anything. <laughs> Much less a high-stakes tournament that's kind of important for WCS points, like this one, for example. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a bit of an upset just because, you know, it's Korean versus Foreigner. But again, like, I think Puck is... It, he, he's one of the people that you would walk into this saying, like, okay, Neeb, Masa, Puck, maybe, like, Huck or something. Like, those are the people that you expect to maybe be able to upset Polt or Hydra. But I think it kind of it kind of falls in line with like what I think is possible. It's within the the realm of possibilities. Hmm. Uh, no, thank I you. mean, like, no offense to like. Oh yeah, good. I was gonna say a quick thanks to Monkey Boy Two Two Six. I thought you were done. <laughs> oh no, I was just gonna say like I mean, no offense to like No Regret or something. But if like No Regret beats Hydra, I'd be like, what is going? Like, what happened in that series? No Regret's gotta learn how to color his hair before he can take on something like Hydra. I think he's got too much creep in his hair, <laughs> literally. <laughs> He's working on that crease spread because he can't get it going in real life. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, of course, over here on Neve's side of the map, we do see the Robo plop down. And this is going to be a pretty big scout for Peely Peely because now he's going to have to know Disruptors are on the way. And there's really two things to do with this, right? Like, you don't want to go Archons. You don't want to go Charge Lots. You don't want to go things that are going to die to the Disruptors. So you can either match it with your own Disruptor play or alternatively go towards Sky Toss. And again... When it comes down to it, I think we all have seen the strengths that is the Golden Armada. And nothing is going <laughs> to, no amount of disruptors is going to really beat things in the sky like that. But it's a little too far gone. And Peely Peely, I'm worried about. Uh, his own disruptor production is going to be so far out. Immortals can do a little bit, I guess. Blink Stalkers can dodge those hits. But Archons are going to die. Zealots are going to die. And if Neeb gets like five disruptors in play and doesn't mismanage any of them, he'll be in a very good spot. Yeah, Peely Peely is starting to get the hallucinated scouts off on Neeb's army as well as the third expansion. So he sees that the immortal count is actually pretty high. He hasn't seen the first set of disruptors though. And I think as you were saying, like this is what ha kind of happens when you have two players that are really just relying on kind of hallucinated scouts. They don't get the full information sometimes of like what units are about to pop out. The fact that disruptors are already on the way for Neeb. And that really can come back to bite you in the butt. 
Um, Peely Peely get enough charge though, and you know, disruptors are really really scary. But there is kind of this nice little timing that we've seen obviously in the past a lot also, where charge load archon can be effective against. A robotility based army in low enough numbers those charge lots get on top of the army the disruptors can't really effectively get hits off on the charge lots after they've charged without doing friendly fire damage it can work but it's really difficult it it really is not going to be easy for peely Beely. well the army is <laughs> i mean it wants to <laughs> fight but I, Fear Dragon, man, I, I'm all I'm all for cheering for Peely Peely. If he changes this direction, that's going to be super cool to see. But these Disruptors are just going to be so hard to overcome. He's going to have to bait out hits in the first place. And the longer this takes to fight, he's going to be able to oh. more hits. Huge denial on picking off that Warp Prism. Great blinks out of Neeb. It's on cooldown, so he might bleed some Stalkers. But cutting out his opponent's reinforcements, absolutely worth it. Yeah, there's no nearby pylon. The pylon is all the way back over outside of his natural expansion. He's got to walk all these units way across the map. That's going to delay his pushing. You have to remember that this is a push that is really relying on, hey, I have charge slots and I have archons. As this army gets bigger, the disruptor hits are going to get bigger more than anything else. I mean, look at that. Like, one disruptor hit almost kills an archon entirely. Two will lock it down. Oh, and as the disruptor counts also builds up, like it just gets harder and harder. I love this walling in from uh, Neve. It's like that subtle walling in with the pylons, where yeah, it's good for photon overcharge or something, but it's also gonna make it harder for these charge lots or archons to actually make their way in. Overcharge. Uh, I guess actually, where is the? Over is there no mothership core for this? No, she's just chilling in the main. I was gonna say this with those four yeah. pylons that get overcharged could really make this scary. I mean, it, right for right now, just against the army composition for Peely Peely, he doesn't even need it. Just making it awkward and making it hard for these uh, Zells to charge on in is going to be more than enough. Look at this. The Zells actually clump up on the pylons, eating a couple of disruptor shots. Oh. Charge has already been used. But look at that army supply dip for Peely Peely. I mean, Archons are good, and they're going to be hard to kill. Don't get me wrong, but the disruptors, some of them are on cooldown. Many are going to be coming off cooldown shortly. Uh, this War Prism is actually Ooh. providing me a little bit of that blink control. Keep those immortals alive. Pulling the back. Wow. And this is not looking so bad for Peely Peely all of a sudden. But two more disruptor shots are coming in. They kill, oh my god, all those oh. freshly warped in units. They just disappear, Fear Dragon. Oh my god. GG. For a small glimmer of hope, like it looked like that may have been going well for Peely Peely, but damn. Oh, that, you know, I think that one, if that final disruptor shot had not gone off and killed off so much of Peely Peely's army, I could very well have seen him at least being able to like start to transition out and maybe get up some targets or do some sort of transition just because he would have killed right. off enough of the army of need but oh that was really close that was uh we're gonna go to a small break while we set up for game number four because this could be the last game um it is 2-1 now in the favor of neeb so uh oh wait no is that no it's 2-0 excuse me i've got the wrong two map zero. in it's pre on Terrace next. Two zero. Excuse me. Sorry, I just went to the, I went to the fourth map and assumed two one. Uh, anyways, yeah, we're gonna go to a small break because this could be it, depending. Uh, so it'll be pre on Terraces when we return. All right, we're back. We're just gonna skip the intro so we can hop into the game as it is already underway. Now again, this could be the last map. Uh, let me swap those around one more time. As it is game number three, and if this guy in the bottom right wins it here now. <laughs> Spotting the bottom right side, <laughs> it's gonna be on fire's Neeb. And his opponent up here in the top left hand corner, we have the red Protoss player from Psystorm Gaming, Peely Peely, who uh, almost accidentally spawned in a Zerg <laughs> until you pointed it out. And that's what they're talking about. They're, uh, yeah, Peely Peely was, was contemplating playing like, Zerg. Yeah, maybe I should try Zerg on this map. And I think it's because every Protoss <laughs> player has felt the sting of a gold based Zerg. I mean, whether it's Roach Ravager all in or whether it's just early pool BS, like this map has encouraged all kinds of play that just really hurts Protoss, I would say, more than benefits anyone else. Yeah. Uh, I, this map. I have no words for it. But it's a PvP, so we don't have to worry about any of those uh, crazy Zerg gold based shenanigans. Uh, we are going to be seeing Neeb go for a. Uh, Okay, second gateway, yeah. Nothing uh, nothing super out of the ordinary, but Peely Peely delaying that second gateway, going for the Nexus instead, and Neeb immediately comes in and spots this out. 
Of course, that's a pretty big scout to see a second gas go down. It's a big scout to know that they took the Nexus on location. You can do some guesswork when it comes to PvP, but to like, confirm these things is a pretty big deal. And I'd say more so it gets dangerous the deeper into a series you go. You know Peely Peely's literally backed into a corner at this point. You know he's going to maybe try something scrappy, and you got to make sure you check for that. Last thing you want to yeah. do is like be ahead 2-0 and lose to DT Rush or something silly. It's so funny because there are the players who say like I'm behind, so I'm gonna play super safe. I'm gonna play super like standard. I'm gonna scout for things. And then there are the players who are like I'm behind, so let's like let's cannon rush. Let's like dark shrine very very quickly. Let's like do something weird. And Peely Peely is definitely one of the players I agree like that does something a little bit weirder when he's down. I love that, um, mm -hmm. by the way, gotta give a shout to Ting Jesse in chat. We're not even doing Ting right now, but everyone's talking about Ting. That's how you know your tournament <laughs> was a success. It's like a month and a half later, it's DreamHack, but everyone in chat is currently talking about Ting. I can't wait for season two, guys. We, we have planned things out with Jesse. We, we're just waiting to announce the dates because we're waiting to confirm some dates. But just because Ooh. it's being brought up so much, like Ting season two, we already said was happening. And hopefully soon we should be able to tell you when it's happening. Yeah, I really like this cute little play from Peely Peely. He just uh, goes for the full wall off over here just to deny the adepts as he did see them moving across the map. And that's going to actually be kind of annoying for me because normally it, you do want to be able to move in and get the scout off. Yeah, it's a nice wall off for certain and it'll buy him time as far as early aggression goes. But I mean, he's going to see this with the uh, the adept. He knows there's an oracle on the way. This stopped the, the adepts for now, but that oracle is still going to be a problem for him. By the way, big yeah. resub coming in from Mike XC47. Thank you for the 23 months. Long time to be with the channel. Big love, dude. Well, now the adepts do uh, get chased back, and he did it without burning an overcharge, which is a very important point due to that scout we had just mentioned. He's going to need an overcharge to deal with the Oracle. A couple stalkers, they'll eventually kill it, but not fast enough. Not before it kills a lot of probes. Yeah, but uh, as the Oracle makes its way across the map, we also have a Phoenix follow-up over here for Neebs, so I guess maybe just not entirely sure what Peely Peely is going for. Generally, when you see a PvP and you see a Protoss player going for that Phoenix follow-up, it's maybe, one, a little bit worried about War Prisons, but two, I guess, worried about your opponent also going for the Stargate play. Robo on deck for Neeb. That'll finish up here in a second. I mean, we already know which direction he goes with this, and that will be disruptors if this gets late enough into the game. But <clears throat> again, with the gold base economy behind you, with the potential of this map being what it is, there's a chance Peely Peely hits hard enough, early enough, that Neeb never gets to that comfy position that he likes to play. But Neeb also doesn't really play greedy, and in every game that we've seen disruptors, every single game that we've seen him with disruptors, whether it's here today or in past games, it's not at the sacrifice of a bunch of gateway units. And he doesn't find himself often with his pants around his ankles. Like, he's always ready for an attack and slowly gets the disruptors out behind it. Yeah, I think Neeb kind of knows that he is going to be a little bit more favored as the games go on. That definitely has been showing, I guess, as the... Uh... He, like even in his series versus Hawk, he looks really solid as he moves into the later stages of the game. So all he has to do is figure out how to get there and force Peely Peely into a position where he feels like he has to be aggressive. Um, but it does look like we have a Dark Shrine coming out for Peely Peely. It does get revealed though by that Oracle revelation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if Neeb didn't know about his his reputation for going for these, anyways. Well, it actually goes for a forge, which is kind of funny to see. Now, this may just be for upgrades, but of course, this will give him the opportunity for cannons if he gets really worried about that defense. <laughs> I mean, I don't imagine he's that scared of the DTs, but uh, if he's going to get up ahead and upgrades, it's just a nice benefit to be able to throw down one cannon and be good to go. Yeah, I kind of wonder if that forge is really just going to be for something like plus one weapons, just because... If you're going to stick around on like the immortal tech and you're not really planning to go straight up to the robotics bay, you're just gonna add on gateways. Yeah. Plus one weapons is a very important upgrade to have, but ooh, well, a more important than plus third. one is uh, plus three. But we'll talk about that more if it gets to that point. This third does not get <laughs> scouted, by the way. So this is a bit cheeky. Unfortunately, the track record on base trade TV though is anytime someone reaches out for a sneaky one of those bases, they lose the game. So I don't know about this fear dragon. We'll see how this plays out for him. There's plenty of immortals. There's a surprising amount of sentries. Actually, I want to comment on this. That's a lot of guardian shields. It's a couple of force shields, but it is weird to see this much gas invested in sentries. 
I'm not too sure what to make of it either, but uh, Peely Peely maybe looking for the opportunity to blink into the main base. This is definitely a very strong map to go for those kind of blink plays, uh, just because you can easily dart between the main base and the natural expansion. A lot of room to blink up in, and oh, you know these gateways are actually going to be... Yeah. The gateways are going to work against Neve. Neve can't get back up to his main very easily. Now, Overcharge is going to help out a bit. That Sentry out of Peely. Peely was phenomenal. Three Immortals oh. removed from the fight. Fear Dragon, this was a great attack, but it's not enough to stay. I mean, this was a really cool move out of Peely. Peely, it got some good kills, but <laughs> unfortunately, it wasn't enough to stay. I mean... Realistically, Peely Peely, obviously, he wants to do some good damage over here, but I don't think, know that he has to do a significant amount of damage. Obviously, not being able to kill off the third or knowing about your opponent's third expansion, that kind of sucks, but he has his gold up, and even if he's at a worker deficit, the longer that you can keep this aggression going and keep Neeb feeling on the defensive, I think the better of a position Peely Peely is going to get into. This is a map where you need double gold. He has a gold of the natural, and that means he doesn't necessarily need as many workers as you'd normally need for three base economies. Ooh. Well, plus one weapons is finished up, though, for Neeb, so oh. when he does oh. try and take an engagement... He can also just dive in here with the Oracle and kill a bunch of probes. There's only two stalkers Wait. defending, after all. Did... I think, okay, no, Neeb still has an Observer sitting with his army. He only lost one of them. Yeah, they've both been picking at Observers <laughs> the entire time. Sentry's tried to dive for it a little bit early. It got a bit scary. Yo, I'm wondering, oh, actually, by the way, if if um, if not the Oracle for damage, putting out a Stasis Trap and just denying mining? Like, I'm surprised Neeb's not using that Oracle. I'm really curious to see what his plans for it are. Uh, while this goes on, by the way, this is saturated, so it's kind of good to go. I guess the Mothership Core at some point probably uh, transferred some probes over Sneaky Sneaky style as she is low <laughs> on energy now. Uh, the Adepts are going to try and make for the break, though. Stalkers blink to the right side. Immortals are on that low ground. Guardian Shell's getting popped all over the place. And for Neeb, let's not forget, this is like having a sort of temporary Ooh. plus two armor to any units underneath that Guardian Shield. As all these projectile oh. damage units are going to get killed. Focus down on these Immortals. The Stalkers blink and pick off the Warp Prism, so no reinforcements for his opponent. Peely Peely forced to fight with what he has. His army supply is not holding up. The plus one weapons for Neeb looking fantastic. And his plus two, so close to finishing. Oh, Neeb kept, did a great job keeping all of his Immortals alive during that engagement. And Peely Peely lost every single one of them, and that was an enormous loss. Even had a couple that I think were on a little bit of a miss rally as he was on the retreat with the Immortals the only immortal. the fight. This is the only Immortal available for Peely oh. Peely. He's trying to bait this into an overcharge. I like that he tried to take a positional advantage, but in doing so, just zones himself out of his own natural. <laughs> and Neeb recognizes this immediately, pounces. And let's not forget, Neeb can force field behind himself if he wants to. Oh. Well, War prism pick off down. on the war prism. I mean, getting something done over here, but yeah, there it is. Four seal coming down. Oh. There is a, a dark, dark no, he's there, got, but the he's observer's got observer. still around. He recalls yeah. to the main. That's a clever as hell move out of Peely Peely to get around that four seal conundrum. It's oh, still going to cost him his gold. He's just getting four into the main base, though. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of awkward no matter how this goes. The gold base going down wasn't super devastating, more so to the gas count than the mineral count at this stage of the game. But uh, let's not forget, Neeb, look what he's setting up. Traps. If Peely Peely wants to chase him over to the mm. third, he's going to trigger a bunch of these units getting stasis trapped. I don't know if you realize this or not. Let's also note there's no observer. There's no detection for Peely Peely. So he has no idea that those are there at all. He does blink in and bait one, but there's two more where that came from. Oh. The Immortals are holding strong in the front line, though. 26 stalkers remain for Neeb. He's got plus two weapons now, Fear Dragon. And he's blinking. He's second blinking with a war prism. <laughs> I think that Neeb knows that he's got this. Peely Peely is blinking for his life, but all of his stalkers are trapped behind the choke point. And I think that Neeb is going to be taking a 3-0 victory as he takes out the third and moves on to the finals in the winner's bracket. So congratulations to Neeb. Locks this series down. I mean, like, the whole the whole tournament so far, 3-1, 3-1, 3-0. I mean, <laughs> when we started this cast and I told you guys Neeb was looking strong, that wasn't me talking out of my ass. That was me talking as someone who knows who Neeb is. And <laughs> Neeb is a fantastic player right now. So uh, congratulations to him as he does advance on to the finals, which won't be played tonight. I know that much for certain. Um, mm -hmm. But now i got to ask what we're doing. Because, again, I think we do – I'm not sure we do lose your semis today or if they save it for tomorrow. So um, we'll be going to a commercial break. And hopefully by the time we return, I'll know some more information for you guys. And we'll let you know what's going on. Um, but regardless of this, by the way, I do want to remind you guys that Fear Dragon will be joining me tomorrow morning. We won't be looking as professional, but he will be joining me tomorrow morning for the Alima League, which is still happening. So, um, oh, we could look professional. No, we wanted to. Nope. Not. You don't happen. want to get up at five in the morning and get up, put on a suit. 
I wake up at 5 in the morning just so I can wake up, dude. Like, I don't have time for anything else <laughs> in that hour. But, okay, I'll uh, be back soon, guys. <laughs>